Oh, hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Forge. Uh, yeah, so last time we won and I made a couple of mistakes with, some, with playing specific cards at specific moments because I didn't really understand those cards' effects as I should have. So uh, I rewatched the video, I now understand the how I am mishandling certain cards. So let's let's focus on that and let's see if we can uh, make it work this time. So we won the coin toss. We will we really like to go to play or draw. I will play just because I always want to start. I will keep this hand because I think this is an unacceptable hand to start with. Let's put it on a forest. So yeah, I made a couple of mistakes. I think I can rectify those quite well right now. Let's put down another forest. So he summoned. We're playing against Nisa World Waker Field. And uh, what he did is that he cast a Colony Heart Expedition. Which uh, has landfall effect, which means whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, uh, as is my opponent's c control, you may put a quest counter on Colony Heart Expedition. And then it also has the effect of remove remove free quest counters from Colony Heart Expedition and sacrifice it. Search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Okay, so this is entirely so that he can, uh, he can uh, expedite the process of building a mana pool. Okay, that's fine. So he already put a quest counter on his colony heart expedition because he also put down a forest uh, mana over there. Let's summon Prowling Serpopard first. I think that would be a good uh, first step. Now he... what the fuck is he doing? He drew a greater sandworm. Okay. And now he's he's using the landfall ability to put another quest counter on Colony Heart Expedition. And now he's uh, tapping his mana to summon Wind Rider Eel, which is a 2 slash 2 fi fish creature with flying and with a landfall effect. Which means whenever a land enters the battlefield under your, your control, Wind Rider Eel gets plus 2 plus 2 until the end of turn. Okay, that's interesting. So, let's summon a giant spider now. And let's also alpha strike him with prowling serpopard. So we did damage to him, he put down a... He put down a, an island mana, I believe, and that triggered the landfall effect on colony heart expedition as well as the plus two plus two on wind rider eel. Which is quite interesting. Oh, he... Ah, and he used the ability from uh, Kali Heart Expedition to then place two other uh, land cards, uh, tapped island cards on his side of the field. And these two other tapped cards triggered even more landfall on Windrider Eel. So right now Windrider Eel, Eel is at 8 slash 8. I will not block that, I will let that attack pass, pass through. And now he summoned Nisa World Waker, which is a, a planeswalker, which starts out at f oh no, at four loyalty. Or oh no, he starts out at three loyalty, but he already used the plus one loyalty on on Nisa World Waker. So Nisa World Waker has three abilities, like most uh, planeswalkers. And its first ability is for plus one loyalty, which is to target land you control becomes a four slash four elemental creature with trample but it's still a land then then another ability is also for a plus one loyalty which is untap up to four target forests and then finally for minus seven loyalty it he can use an ability in which he search in which it searches your library for any number of basic land cards puts them into the battlefield then shuffle your library those lands become a force left fall elemental creatures with trample, but they're still lands. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so Brining Fog was a was a card which I misused on the previous video. It's for whatever reason I thought that its effect was that it makes all my creatures on my side of the field invincible or indestructible, I guess I should say. 
but what it actually does is that it prevents all damage that would be dealt to creatures this turn. Not just to my creatures, but to any creatures. This basically means that absolutely any any and every creature on the battlefield, whether it's my creature or my opponent's creature, will not die from damage at all during that turn. So this also guarantees that my opponent's creatures don't die just as much as my own creatures don't die. Also, creatures you control gain hexproof until the end of the turn. So my creatures will also gain hexproof, and I think that was the reason why I uh, I misunderstood the effect. Only this effect applies to my creatures, but the prevent all damage that would be dealt to creatures this turn would apply to creatures on both sides of the field. So that's something I have to worry about. Let's summon a giant spider and let's attack him with prowling sub apart again. We're even. We're. Uh, yeah, we're making some progress slowly but surely. He used the Nisap World Waker's one uh, first ability, I believe, to transform an island card into a four slash four uh, card with uh, trample on it. Now, I really don't like this effect, so. Uh, I kind of want to block his Wind Rider Eel with both my giant spiders to remove it from the battlefield, but that introduces other issues. Let's summon w w Sifter Worm, and yeah, I think this is an acceptable situation for all of us. Let's go with this. So the first will be a Forest card. Okay, now let's attack him with Prowling Serpopard. Uh, he cast the Sylvan Bounty instant, which does target player gains 8 life, and it also has basic land, cy land cycling for 1 gr green mana and 1 other mana, which means discard this card, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it and put, you in put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Okay. So he summoned another 4 slash 4 creature, which is quite annoying. Let's uh, let's uh, activate Cartouche of Strength and uh, enchant my giant spider with it. And now with this ability I can attack one of his creatures with my giant spider, but I genuinely don't want to do that. So let's now attack him with both Crawling Sepulpania and with Sifter Worm. So he's at 5 life now. Which is sucks for him. Let's summon Shefet Monitor now. Just to gain even more firepower. And now let's attack him with Prowling Serpo Part with, and with Sifter Worm. So he's blocking my Sifter Worm with a Forest card and with an Island card. Okay. I don't have any preference for either of them, so I will choose any order. Okay, that was intense. He summoned even more creatures. But I don't think that they will do him much good. Let's uh, alpha strike him of our giant spider. Uh, actually, no. Let's... Uh, whatever, sure. Let's do it. What the fuck just happened? Oh my god. He ah he used the minus seven ability from Nisa Planeswalker, which basically means that uh, this basically means that he can search his library for any number of basic land cards, then put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle his library. So he just summoned a shitload of creatures, all with summoning sickness. That really sucks. Because now I don't think I can block any number of my cards. Or, or, or I can't block any number of his cards because he has so many creatures. Wow, this sucks. I have to alpha strike him right now with everything that I've got. 
it doesn't really matter which order I attack him. But now he's going to attack me with everything he has and he's going to defeat me. That was absolutely fucking terrible. Like, that ability from Nisa was absolutely terrible. And I don't want to deal with that ever again. Okay, let's let's redo that. That was absolutely fucking terrible. Never again will I do that again. Let's uh, start from the top. Let's keep our, our hand and let's put down some forest cards. Let's summon a bla Bitter Blade Warrior. He already summoned Eye or Ru Ruin Expedition, which has landfall effect, which basically does whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a quest counter on Eye or Ruin Expedition and then remove three quest counters from Eye or Ruin Expedition and sacrifice it to draw two cards. Okay. Let's summon Initiate's Companion. And let's attack him with our Bitter Blade Warrior and let's also exert our Bitter Blade Warrior for an extra plus one plus zero on it. To do three damage instead of just two damage. He also uh, cast a retreat to Kazandu enchantment, which has landfall, which means whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Either Pluto plus one plus one counter on target creature, or you gain two life. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Let's attack him with finish his companion now. And since I did that direct damage to uh to him we finish his companion initiates companion ability triggered which means i can untap a target card of whichever i want i will untap uh, bitter blade warrior okay let's now summon a uh, jane spider and let's alpha strike him with everything we've got And let's untap Bitter Blade Warrior because of Initiate's Companion's effect. He's finally summoned something. It's a Frag Tusk creature, which is which is a five slash three beast creature, which has the ability of when Frag Tusk enters the battlefield, you gain five life. When Frag Tusk leaves the battlefield, create a three slash three green beast creature token okay interesting can we destroy that frag tusk creature i will cast ambuscade to use my initial companion to destroy his frag tusk just to make things a bit easier on, on us so he created the free slash free beast token creature which makes sense now let's alpha strike him with everything we've got he will block one of our creatures he destroyed our Initiate's Companion with his card. Now he summoned Nissa Planeswalker again. And now since we know how damaging that Nissa Planeswalker can be, I really don't want to deal with her again. So let's make sure we defeat him before he can make use of that. Although I'm not entirely sure just how we can do that just yet. So let's end our turn. He got a plus one plus one on his forest card due to retreat to Kazandu, I believe. And he also summoned a force left four island, which really sucks. Now he's attacking me with his forest card, which I really don't care. He also summoned reckless scholar. Oh boy, this is going to be difficult. Yeah, let's just alpha strike him. I don't give a crap. I will exert Bitter Blade Warrior. Yeah, I will apply those effects in whichever order I want to. We we made some progress, although not that much. Okay, so this kind of sucks. We're in a really bad position right now. Let's summon Honored Hydra. And let's keep everything untapped, although he will still attack me with all of his cards, and yeah, he just defeated me. So that was absolutely terrible. We just didn't stand a chance against him. 
Well, either way, that was very fun. Thank you very much for watching. You can get in touch with me through my Mastodon account as well as uh, join my Matrix room, details of which you can find in the description of this video. And in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.